You wander down a street in a not-too-demolished looking part of town, but you don't really take much of it in. You're not looking where you're going. This is an elementary mistake, especially on a planet where everything that exists seems to be on a spectrum of engineered specifically for murder to could be a weapon in a pinch, but you've got a lot on your mind. And now, as the car, these guys probably have some ridiculous word for it, but you haven't learned it, you hadn't noticed slams into you, sending you flipping head over feet. You add a few new concerns to your list, your bones and organs. The sound of the driver yelling, watch where you go and lump squirt chugger, fades as they drive away, and you assess your situation. You stretch each limb in turn, which, you gotta say, doesn't feel great. You've landed in a bush which is covered in sharp spines. Your arms and legs all still work, though, and when you do an experimental cough, no blood comes out. Pretty lucky, you think. You may have redefined what luck means by this point in your journey, but you'll take what you can get. You don't figure that luck will extend to the driver turning around to help you out of this bush, your gaze meeting and sparking an immediate and intense connection leads to a beautiful and lifelong friendship, but you let yourself hope. After a few minutes of struggle, the answer to your comradely daydreams comes into focus above you, a figure outlined by the spiny leaves of your plant prison and the glow of the moons. The troll you see isn't the driver of the car, but you don't care. Your heart is beating wildly with your continued lucky streak. Hello, you seem to have fallen victim to a colliding scamper with that scuttle buggy back there. Have you contacted your personal legislacerator? If not, I'd like to offer my services. My name is Tagora Gorjek, but please, call me Gorgor. I'm here for you, uh, for a nominal fee, of course. He pulls a business card out from his sleek teal vest and offers it to you with a precise flick of the wrist. His claw beds are perfect. You try again to sit up, buoyed by his offer for assistance. He's some kind of doctor, maybe? Or lawyer? It doesn't matter, really, because he said he was here for you. Those words go right ahead and burn themselves onto the softest chamber of your heart. You start telling him your plight thus far, reaching up through the brambles toward this beacon of hope. This guy seems trustworthy, and that's not just your lack of options talking, you swear. As you shift, the moonlight shines on you. He steps back briefly, dropping the card. The one eye that's not covered by a swoop of product-infused hair opens wide. He recovers, smoothing his hands down his chest and straightening up, clearing his throat as you continue to explain. Your what? Oh yes, an alien. I knew that. I've done work with aliens before, so your situation shouldn't be an issue at all. Everyone deserves an equal opportunity to be represented by me. In fact, we may be able to use this in our favor for a larger cachet settlement. It all depends on our angle. Here, try moving your chuck column. You aren't sure why this is necessary, but you wiggle your torso, hoping that's right. You've never wanted anything more in your meager existence than to follow this specific directive perfectly. No, not that. You add a little hip jiggle, not so much that he might think it's a come on, but enough to say, hey, I'm friendly and I know what the fuck I am doing. No, you're the thing that holds up your think pan. Work with me. You continue what you hope is a part of a troll friendship ritual, shimmying various parts of your anatomy deeper into the bush until you get to your neck, and he clasps his hands together. There we go. That one hurt, didn't it? Definitely a case of column snap, which can get us a decently hefty restitution. Your neck feels fine, or it doesn't hurt any more than the rest of you, but you give him what you hope is a convincingly painful nod of agreement. Of course, you will need to front the initial legislation costs. We may also have to injure you further to ensure our case is convincing. But you've got to break a few cluck beast embryos to make a grublet, as you well know. Yes, I think we may make a mutually beneficial team, if you're willing to do what it takes to bring about the justice you deserve. So what do you say? How would you like to help me help you? He's talking really fast, and you're not sure exactly what to think about your lack of funds or the idea of breaking any more bones, but that smile is sharp and shiny and pointed right at you. You want more of it. Ask him if he does pro bono work. You thank him profusely for his offer to help and explain that while your situation hasn't exactly left you very rich, you'll pay him back in glorious friendship, the most infinite of resources. You lay it on thick. He seems like a guy who can appreciate a good deal when he sees one, and you can't imagine a better deal than this. You reach both arms up, waiting for him to scoop you up out of this pain plant like the gentle baby you are. Sorry, I don't do charity. 
Such a shame, too. I was hoping working with an alien might make for a more interesting day than usual. He turns on his heel and walks away, his high ponytail swishing behind him. <laughs>